Is it time to serve it up yet or what, baby? Check this out. You know, like in it, you know, 92, 93, 94, Domino come out, you know, with a unique style, ghetto jam. A lot Most of people definitely. like it. A lot of people got the little flow now. So now it's time for Domino to take it a step higher. So expect more vocals because the ladies are expecting it and they are demanding it. And that's what you get. Sean Anton Ivey, a.k.a. Domino, born March 17, 1972. The career of an entertainer can be very short-lived. It's an industry where age is very important because it changes who you are, or at least the part of you that made fans fall in love with how you entertain in the first place. But in parts of entertainment, that can work out well for you, as when you age, you get to play a totally new character that can still be a part of what movies need. Take Denzel, for example, or Samuel L. Jackson. I can enjoy movies that feature the young or old versions of them and still enjoy it in the exact same way, even when their appearance change. It only presents a new character, but the same talents as what I first were attracted to, now more wise and polished. In entertaining through music, that's not the case. Vocal talent similar to physical talent to play a sport has an expiration date. Michael Jordan would be the best player in any era if his body never aged since his prime. LeBron James would have won Bill Russell amounts of chips if he could have stopped aging in his. But the body does age, and those players did have to sit it down for the younger generation to have their shot. In music though, it's very similar. You can't have the same vocal tone plus the energy it takes to write, promote, and perform that song like you used to. Then you get to a certain point where even your appearance and style also ages and falls out of the cool realm that hip hop is based on and coveted in all walks of life. People from other races play hip hop to feel cool. What's cool about a 50 year old still bouncing like he used to, still rapping about senseless activities and a reckless life like a 20 year old, still addressing ops and wearing a flag that signifies a lost soul who needs others to validate him? In no way Big Daddy Kane can rap like Kane from the 80s and early 90s and still be popular today. He'd sound old and stylish. Imagine that, Big Daddy Kane, stylish. I say all that to say today's feature is one of the dopest rappers before his time that may have missed his window to rap stardom. Not that he didn't have a nice career he still could profit from, but that as far as becoming the star he could have with his talent, that didn't happen. At some point, people forget about you, and he's one rapper from those days I'd like to highlight and talk about where he met growth stunts that caused his before its time talent not to shine like it would today. Salute to Lady Lex for this request. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. You can also send a super thanks by clicking the button below. Enjoy the video. Domino is a St. Louis born, Long Beach, California raised rapper you may know from his hit song Ghetto Jam in 1993 that was top 10 on Billboard, reaching number 7 and number 1 in hip hop and rap. One of the reasons I decided to do this feature is because after being referred to it and going back to listen, it brought back such a nostalgic feeling even though I was too young to understand in 93 anything the song said but it just felt like childhood again. Like sonically, it was the feel of what the early 90s was. On top of that, he completely owned that instrumental vocally. The melodies and swag on it is too smooth as each melody was like its own instrument. When he released that song, Domino became a rapper in high demand. Def Jam and Russell Simmons would win the bidding war for his services as their first West Coast rapper through Outburst Records. He was the first rapper to perform a number one rap song that featured melody throughout the entire song. Stunt number one, having a style so similar. Now while you may disagree, this has been a topic throughout Domino's career, especially in a time where it mattered. Back in the early 90s, West Coast music as a whole wasn't what it would become as West Coast artists weren't being signed to top labels like a Def Jam. 
having a rapper like Snoop Dogg, who Domino was always compared to, even though to me they were very different, which we'll speak more on later, but they were also similar enough that Snoop releasing the same year as Domino quickly overshadowed what he was doing. They both have that relaxed flow and cadence, but Domino would sing for an entire record and make it a hit, whereas Snoop was more of a rapper, with a slow cadence but not really singing or as melodic, which actually worked in Snoop's favor at the time. Rap was far from the stage where singing was thought of as cool. It actually was received rather harshly, like you sold out. Selling out in rap is equivalent to not being real or true to the culture. If you rapped, you had to rap. This is why Snoop fell more into a box of what was wanted at the time, and because Domino was his comparison, it's like the industry acted like they couldn't have both. Either way, his first album released December 7, 1993 behind hit singles Ghetto Jam and Sweet Potato Pie, released earlier that year. The album was critically received and went gold, but many still couldn't get past the similarities to Snoop and placed him in a box where he was seen as a not so popular version of another artist. Stun number two, Def Jam Dissolving Outburst Records. The second growth stunt for Domino as far as becoming a star in the 90s was centered around the release of his second album, Physical Funk. Not only did Domino go away from the melodic single his first song was, to more typical rapping on the self-titled single for his second album, which took away some of the uniqueness of an artist like Domino and placed him in a box with the rest of the traditional rapping artists. The only thing is, his pairs were also mixing their style with more in-your-face lyrics that either created controversy or played off what was popular in the culture in a better way than Domino did. They rapped about gangbanging, politics of being black in America, and even the most popular topic of sex they made seem cooler and a more intriguing lifestyle than when Domino attempted to do so on a song like Physical Funk. In my opinion, had he been more successful doing the popular traditional rap or stayed in that melodic lane that would have opened up eventually seeing where hip hop has went, Def Jam would have had the faith in him not to dissolve the record label he was tied to them through Outburst Records. Before releasing his second album, it was delayed by Def Jam, which affected his rollout and didn't capitalize on the buzz of Physical Funk, which was the number one video on MTV. Without the backing of a machine like Def Jam, Domino couldn't find footing with another top label, and his career essentially faded in the background. Stunt number three, before his time. And lastly, an artist like Domino was at least 10, 20 years before his time. Nate Dogg, who came in the game in the late 90s, a decade after Domino, was known for the same type of unicornness as Domino in that they were capable of using melodies to carry their songs, but for Domino, he was in a time where that wasn't the popular thing to do. Like mentioned, people looked at him as if he sold out, like he wasn't true to the culture of rap. In Nate's time, with the added exposure by the late 90s, people loved his sound and noticed he fit well on hip-hop beats, a lot because the groundwork Domino laid 10 years earlier. With his capabilities, imagine a Domino song today. Of course, meaning he would be much younger and still considered cool by American hip-hop standards. He would be huge with everyone now using melodies to carry songs. It made him go away from that sound because the world wasn't ready for it and it pretty much buried him in a heap of rappers that could do normal rap better. He decided to take his talents overseas where he's considered a classic artist and celebrated, whereas in America he's considered old and stale and no longer cool. All in all, Domino made some classic hip-hop songs that are still fire today. Ghetto Jam is still one of the best hip-hop songs of the 90s to me, and that can't be taken away. He's still able to make money off rap and feed his family, so in that way, he's doing fine. But for these reasons, his growth was stunted. Much respect, salute, it's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music, and I'm out.